front of you. Check your front tire wear. If it's a positive camber on one side and negative on the other, well, there it is. You found the solution. But you, the answer is right in front of you. And the amount of times I have people bring me a car, oh, it was tweaked last run. Can you have a look for me? Well, there's nothing to check because you've taken it all to pieces. The, the answer's gone now. So, yeah, don't be too hasty just to strip the car apart. You know, it's, it wants to tell you what's wrong. So figure it out. Uh, Mark Stiles has a question for you. Um, uh, how do I, and let me find Mark. Uh, hopefully it's not abusive. Shoot. It's not. What's the question? <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's something that me and Dave have discussed before, really. Um, I know the answer to this and I know what Dave's going to say, but I think it would be good for some other people to hear it as well. Um, I've, I've before asked, asked Dave the question, which is, if you woke up tomorrow morning and suddenly you couldn't do it anymore, how would you get it back? Don't know. Yep. Don't know. There's, there's, a, there's, a certain, there's a certain point in your racing where you can think about everything you do around the whole lap and you can get around the lap at a certain speed. There is a certain level that you can get to. But when you want to achieve and go faster, how do you get there? It becomes a natural instinct. Yep. And the best, way could, the best way I can describe it is when you're actually driving and you're actually in the zone, so to call it, my radio disappears. My radio, I don't even remember it being in my hands. I don't know where my hands are. I don't know what the fingers are doing. I couldn't tell you. and I don't really want to know that I'm putting the car in the right place at the right speed to get the best performance I can out of it. And any race car driver, full size or RC, they'll tell you the same thing. That they don't know. They cannot tell you exactly what they do. They just do the right things. And again, that is one word, practice. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and I, listen, I, I, think that's a, I think that's an interesting slant on it. And, and, and I think if you were to, in my sport, if you were to go back 25 years and ask all the guys and girls, of how did you do it? They'd go, no idea. You ask someone now and they would all have a structure. Someone that's successful now isn't it's not on a wing and a prayer anymore <clears throat> and i think that's the difference that's what football has gone through this process of being you know calling him the gaffer uh, and you know all that bloody cliche of uh, crap stuff of, of football where uh, you know and they're gradually starting to work with you know a whole plethora of performance people when you talk about I didn't know, it was because you, you applied the man hours, which we talked about, of, you know, we've talked about it on the show, that you've just applied as much as you can, down the track, down the track, down the track, down the track, down the track. Well, of course, when you're a kid at 15 or 12, you've got that, but as a 40 year old, you need a little bit more structure. And I think to jump up two or three grades in a final is so much easier to do with a structured plan rather than just saying we'll just go practice and you know and 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 uh tony wade has, has put up can you race too much in my opinion you can race too much you'd be better off working on different skills over and above just stick time because just stick time ain't doing it for you i think when when you when we when we look at these ingredients and, we, and, I, and we'll come on to a, a bit more of this in a second you look at those ingredients you can't just keep throwing hours at it if you're driving a shit car in terms of how it's put together, it, it just, just, it just wouldn't work. Anyone want to reply on that? <laughs> I think there's, there's also the, um, like just practicing the wrong concepts. So with, with golf, we, we've talked about this before. I, I spent a lot of time working on, on golf and I spent a lot of time hitting golf balls because I was told, that that was what you were supposed to do so i do you know hours a day and i never really got any good at it and i was being taught you know taught particular things by a coach that this is the way you're supposed to do it and what what he was really teaching me was that was the way that he did it and that's what worked for him and his body type and his mentality and me just going and hitting balls and trying to copy that didn't work and I think with RC that I, I could go to the track 
and I mean I have I've got, I've gone off to Holland and I've driven around the track 500 laps a day or whatever and I've got better at racing but I haven't got fundamentally faster I haven't jumped you know like even 10 places I, I've maybe jumped two places but been able to handle the the situations better just for the stick time so I think there's an element of the concepts that's missing from from any of these discussions and when you know David gave us a snippet there about aiming for the the tape or aiming for for something um so you can get that repetition they're the sorts of things that that people like me that you know possibly have got the time to spend on it um need you know focused activity rather than just digging it out of the dirt and and you know and if and if you took something like let's take camber for instance that's on the screen here if we measured your camber david and yours mark and then you measured someone's camber three finals down, I absolutely guarantee you that it would not be to the level your camber is measured at. Absolutely, 100%. And then you take someone's ride height. I guarantee you, three levels down, three finals down, their ride height would not be to the level of your ride height. And if you took those two single entities that are on that cog, it would stop them applying it would stop them applying their ability to hit the straight, hit the sweeper, hit the hairpin, hit the chicane. Because fundamentally, the component that allowed them to drive faster was not there. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I think if you say, just go down the track and drive faster or just drive more, it's not enough. No. You, 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 got, um, you need yeah, the real... It's all very well saying, oh, go to a track and do 500 laps. Well, that's it's not going to do much for you unless it's a focused effort. You've got to think, okay, well, I'll change something on my car this, this run. I'll go out and I'll drive 50 laps and I'll see if I can feel a difference to try and understand what that does. Or it might just be modifying your entry to a corner or changing something. But you, ha- you have to have some structure to it. And the, the best way of measuring it is against the clock as well. So... It's pointless driving 500 laps if you haven't got a transponder in your car. You've got to be looking at the clock. Yeah. But also, before you get to that point, you have to practice the repetition of preparing a straight car the same way again yeah. and again and again. So to go back to Tony's question, originally... Thanks, I appreciate that. Thanks, man. Yes, having, having, doing loads of practice is a good thing if you're learning repetition of producing yourself the same car again and again and again and again and again. If you're just throwing any old stuff on it and you're just doodling around that, you're not really achieving much apart from enjoying your hobby. But that repetition of producing the same car, I mean, I know that Alex and Ollie Payne, Ollie Jeffries, they will take their side tubes off every run and make sure they're the same. They'll redo their front kingpins every run to make sure it's the same. They will unbind the pivot every run to make sure it's the same. How many guys can say they do that? Not many. But that's their dedication to make sure that car is exactly the same so they can drive it in exactly the same way and improve themselves every single run. And then from that place forward, yes, Mark, you're absolutely right. Make a change. Do I go faster on the clock? But don't make a change and do five or six laps. Oh, I hate it. You have to see if you can adapt yourself to make it go faster as well. The car isn't going to give you everything all the time. You also have to give it some input to make it faster. Yeah, and so, you know, I've gone another step on from that. Um, And so I've got a a grid up here in front of you and, and, you know, I base Spash it being 10 out of 10. So all all of these disciplines here... All of these disciplines here are on this table. And I work on a 7 out of 10 rule uh, with a lot of you know, aspiring golf pros or, uh, and, and performers. Because I think if you're operating at a 7 out of 10, that's a pretty high level. And you're going to achieve a lot within that. And, and you, know, you, you are human after all. So if you were to take you as the 10 out of 10, and I put myself up there you know, to be shot at, all of a sudden you've got a way of actually assessing what you believe you are either good or bad at and you'll come up with a score 
Uh, and you know, I, and my benchmark is seven out of ten. So I, I, I think my, I think I'm lax in my Canva. I, I really do. I, I, it's certainly something that I, I'm not that flash on. You know, I don't check it enough. Um, but yet, I've really, really, really tried hard the last year to be really hot on my pod and pivot and my body shell and the tuck and all that kind of stuff. And I've nailed that. And I, I question anyone to come up to me and say my body shell is not right uh, and my pod and pivot. And so when you start to then measure what you're doing uh, in these different areas, so when you go back to when you go back to this whole gearbox of performance and you've got all of these various areas and you're assessing all of those areas, you'll actually end up with a score. And so all of your cogs of performance have a score. And so what happens is you see, oh, well, hang on a second, I've got a cog there with three on it. So the first thing I'm going to do when I go back to my practice sessions, which was here, I'm going to make sure I go there with the intention of improving my cog that's got three on it. So actually I bring my cog three up to a 6.2 or a six or whatever. And so I start to work on my weaknesses rather than just trying to go faster work on the actual detail that actually is going to allow me to go faster, which is, you know, going back to your, your, your unmuted mark. So you're happy to jump in when you fancy yep. it. Uh, you know, you go back into working on the stuff that's actually going to allow you to drive faster on the track. It, it, do you feel that you have weaknesses in your game, David? Oh, Christ light. <laughs> what, what, would, what would they be? I'm not telling you that. I race against you. <laughs> Okay, Mark, what are your weaknesses? <laughs> what, 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 give, give us one. Give us one weakness. My weakness now probably is lack of practice and time to dedicate Monday to Friday. So that's, that's, that goes back to the dream though, right? That goes back to living the dream, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but, but, but the dream drives the, the passion and the and the, uh, the the desire to get down to the track and do it and i think that's yeah you know, when you've been there and done it i think it's difficult you only have to look at people across all sports it, it's difficult to keep that motivation when you've been doing it a long time yes it is yeah i mean um ollie's hungry alex is still hungry you look at bruno coelho and those type of racers that are being given the chance um, they're all so hungry if if they could be racing tomorrow i guarantee they would be and, and that's the difference now What's your weakness, Mark? I'd say if, if there was one thing that's kind of held me back in achieving results over the years, it's probably that quite often I don't have the confidence to make a change if I'm not sure it's the right thing. So if I turn up to a race meeting and the car seems nice and straight, it's going pretty well, I'm setting competitive times. Um, it's me all over just to think I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Whereas someone like Dave, because he's more experienced, he's more talented and knowledgeable, he'll be sat there thinking, oh, how can I make this go faster? How can I make this go faster? Whereas I have a tendency to be content with what I've got, which, you know, when you, in hindsight, when you look back, you think, well, if I should have tried this or I should have tried that. But in the heat of battle and the heat of the moment, you, you, you just... I find I'm quite risk averse in that sense. Um, what about you? And have you got something that you a weak on? What would be your weak area? Yeah, mine is. Um, so I, I th that list that you had of all the comparing you to David and then me with the question mark. I think that. No, no, no. Yeah, I, that was good. That was I know. Good. That was just good. <laughs> so I think that at, at one point. Um, in the last two years I've messed each of these things up at least once in a race and you know even at the Worlds I messed stuff up because well so the reason was that it, it, I haven't got a process I haven't got a checklist um, and you know I, I can remember it might have been the Euros on Masters at phone my car was acting really weird and in one particular corner it would just hook and I, it was dead straight and, you know, everything was right. Every, all, all of these things, apart from the body was touching, but only on that one corner. And it was just like the, the front corner just needed to be like 
a millimeter higher and then that cured it but that was like that was a day and a half fighting that um so yeah i think it's it's i'm during the week where i've got you know probably way more time than than normal people i can know that i can turn up to a national and my car will be absolutely spot on but then what happens during that national after i've crashed it a couple of times and and i find that you know you have a lot of time between rounds compared to a club meet and sometimes i just forget to do things i'm just not i'm not methodical enough and i need it written down i need a checklist and and, and david the, the stuff you know that this stuff we've got on the screen here um it, it, is there stuff on there that that you would place importance of just that you'd do every single time like like as a matter of fact or would it only be because something else has happened i if you've given it a whack you might check your pod yeah exactly it's not it's not necessarily something i'll do every single time i think one of those things up there you've got ride height well if i've trued on my tires to the same size and i'm happy that's something i'm not going to check i'm just going to change the tires and and carry on um again faster and camber if i'm happy with the way the front tires were and the way the car felt on the front end again that's something which i'm not going to i'm not going to look at i'm not going to change um general upkeep and maintenance yeah of course i'm going to look at the car flick it over and check it hasn't changed on its own but it's not necessarily something i'm looking to change every single run to tune the car and for me for me personally because i have a busy day at nationals running a shop and trying to help people the eight to ten minutes after my after my race while I'm marshalling, I know you should be paying attention to the track and watching other cars and helping out other races, but that is the time when I spend thinking about how am I going to improve? Mm. What are my choices going to be for the next race? Now, this is before I've spoken or been influenced by anybody that watched my car. Because everybody will have an opinion, but at the end of the day, yours is the one that is the most valuable. So that's the time I spend on my own to myself, generally, thinking about what I'm going to try for the next run and what I'm going to look at on my car. I do exactly the same when I'm marshal at a national. Yeah. Or if, quite, quite often I'll be refereeing, but if I'm not refereeing, I'll be stood there marshalling. Yes, I'm paying attention to the track and the cars on it, but I'm also thinking about, okay, how did that last run go? What does my car need for the next run? And then you think about the options you've got as as to how you can get that and when and when you say that and I, and I want to just pick up on a point that i think you know i think really nice feedback here david you know uh, stuart Barr was said i followed some of the points last week and i couldn't believe how bad my car was set up and therefore can now see why i probably had a lot of issues that i've had i agree with Anne. attention to detail yeah you know, this is this is the absolute reason for these these meetings because like, like I put up on a, on the podcast page, you just you just don't get the enough time with you guys uh, at a race meeting because you've got your own shit to be dealing with. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd like to point out in that ten minutes when I'm thinking about what I'm going to try for the next run, um, what I'm actually going to do, it's the time I actually reflect and be honest. Did I just screw it up? Because yeah. if the honest answer is did I just screw it up, and the answer is yes, then you just reset the car and go again. So it's also a time to reflect on whether you made mistakes as well. Yeah, and, and and would you go would you go to the point where you'd say, well, it, that corner over there is the one that I don't really like. Yes. Or, 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 like the car's not doing what I want it to do over there. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and and so obviously, and I think it's important that people understand if you give it more in that corner, something else might get worse, right? So that's when I will then go back to the table and say, all right, guys, going through that chicane over there, that left hander over there, whose cars feel weird? And if everyone says, yeah, mine feels really odd through there, well, it's not me, it's not the car, it's something to do with the carpet and the grip, or the grip hasn't come yet, or there's something over there. So I'm not going to tune my car to it, but I'm going to watch how that changes during the day. So I won't react to it, as it were, because it's the same for everybody. Mm. Yeah, so again, yeah. it's picking apart the puzzle. Yeah. I mean, again, James and uh, Tony Wade say, you know, both say about watching, you know, the cars in the in the heat. If you're marshalling a heat, the, the you know the heat above you that you're marshalling, you know, their cars are fundamentally going a bit quicker than yours. Watching top heats, you know, you can learn from 
guys like yourself watching their cars, watching their lines. You know, there's, a, there's an incredible amount that you can take 